Hello and welcome to GameSack. The original Super Monkey Ball on the GameCube is one of my favorite games ever. Actually, it's based on an arcade game simply called Monkey Ball. Super Monkey Ball 2 is really good as well. So I was stoked when Sega announced Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, which is basically a remake of Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2, and it's available for all of the modern platforms. I was looking forward to anything new they may have added and also to how well it may or may not control. But first, let's take a look at the original game so there's some context when I'm talking about the new one. Super Monkey Ball on the GameCube was an incredible launch game for the platform in 2001. It was definitely the best game available at launch, and in my opinion, it's still the best game for the GameCube. The goal is simple, guide the monkey who's trapped inside of the ball for some strange reason to the goal in the allotted amount of time. Then you move on to the next stage. You collect bananas along the way, and if you get 100 of them, you get an extra life. This is an important aspect to this particular game, which I'll get to in just a bit. And by just a bit, I mean right now. There are three difficulty modes with an increasing number of stages. If you can clear all of these without using a continue, you gain access to the extra levels. That's where getting as many lives as you can with the bananas comes in. If you beat the extra levels on the expert difficulty, you can access the master levels. Simply getting here in the first place is a huge challenge. In fact, most people think that this game is crazy hard, but actually anyone can have a lot of fun here. That's because this game is extremely well balanced. The easy stages are very simple and gradually guide you into getting better at controlling your monkey. Well, actually you're controlling the tilt of the stage and not the monkey itself, but you know what I mean. You also earn points, which can unlock things like unlimited continues, which is a godsend in the master stages, or just for you to play through the regular courses without having to worry about a game over. If you like the game, you'll keep at it and love trying the stages over and over until you master them. Honestly, that part is the greatest thing about the game, constantly dying again and again trying different techniques. If you get to a certain point where you don't want to tackle any of the more challenging stages, then I still think you'll find that this game offers plenty for you. It's just that it offers more for those who really want to dive deep into it. The control is superb. You only need to worry about the analog stick and nothing else, and it was perfect on the GameCube. Oh, and don't forget about the mini games and the party games. I wasn't into these too much, but when I did play one, it was always monkey target. Fly your monkey through the air and try to land on the platforms that give you the most points. I was never super extremely good at this mini game, but hey, I still enjoy playing it, and I love the music. Unfortunately, this title didn't support progressive scan or widescreen. Still, this is truly a classic game. And that was followed up by Super Monkey Ball 2 on the GameCube in August of 2002. This is another fantastic game. However, in many ways, it's not quite as good as the original. On the plus side, they did add both progressive scan and widescreen modes, as well as slightly better graphics overall. In addition to the challenge mode where you take on all of the levels in beginner, advanced, or expert courses, there's also a story mode. Yes, and it even has nonsensical cutscenes. Like seriously, what the hell? You're still playing through the same stages here, though many of them are differently colored than they are in the challenge mode. After you beat 10 stages, you get a cutscene and then go on to a new area. This does a lot to get rid of the frustration since you have unlimited lives and it's a great way to become familiar with all of the stages. But the stages themselves are where this game comes up a bit short. The stage design is nowhere near as good as the original game. Now, don't get me wrong, there are tons of great stages here, but this new one just tries to add gimmicks that aren't needed. First and foremost are these stupid buttons that you sometimes need to press to do certain things. These are annoying at best and don't really fit in this game. They also added warps in some stages, which aren't horrible, they're just weird. To top it all off, almost every single stage has these boring ramps of nothingness that you have to roll off of for the first few seconds of the game before you even get into the actual stage. What's the point of these? The original game certainly didn't have any issues starting you on the stage itself. This game also has some stages that I absolutely hate, like launchers. 
There's nothing fun about this one, nothing at all, and I've always despised it. It's just a dumb design. And yes, I've beaten it multiple times, so I'm not just saying that because I'm sore I can't get past it or something. There are several stages that take this approach to the design, and that's why this game comes up short. There are a bunch more minigames here though, and Monkey Target returns, although with slightly altered rules. That's fine by me, and I still love the hell out of it, even though I'm still not very good. Overall, this is a good sequel, just not a great one. These two games were combined into one as Super Monkey Ball Deluxe for the Xbox and PlayStation 2 in 2005. This is kind of like Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, which I promise I'll get to soon. The challenge mode now has twice as many stages in each difficulty level. The same story mode from Super Monkey Ball 2 is here, but with many more stages to conquer in each level. Everything is also presented in widescreen. I got the Xbox version here because it supported 480p. I found this one to be slightly softer than the GameCube games, maybe because it has extra anti-aliasing? I don't know. The music is fine, but some of the sound effects sound a bit downsampled. But what I dislike about this game is how awful the control is. You can't tell on the earlier stages, but it really is hard to be precise with the Xbox controller. Here I'm having a really tough time with level 2 of expert difficulty on this thin platform. I've never had any issues with this stage on the GameCube before. It can be done, but it's much more difficult and annoying than the GameCube game. These stages just were not designed for the Xbox controller. I don't know if the analog stick is too sensitive or not sensitive enough, but I don't like it. You can also play this on the Xbox 360 in backwards compatibility mode, but it doesn't help to control any. I mean, you only see me dying a few times here, but believe me, I am trying again and again and again, and I cannot get past this. The controls are just wrong. Oh, and let's take a quick look at the PlayStation 2 version. I've never tried this one before until now, and yikes, it's bad. I didn't have quite as many issues with controlling the game as the Xbox version, but it's still definitely different from the GameCube games. What's even worse is that this version only runs at 30 frames per second. <laughs> Remember back when Nintendo had a more powerful console than Sony in the same generation? I'm really looking forward to seeing how they did the controls on Banana Mania. Okay, now you know what Super Monkey Ball was and what it meant to me and a lot of other people. It's not really worth talking about any of the other Monkey Ball games because Banana Mania is basically a remake of the first two games much like Deluxe was. So let's stop wasting time and jump right into Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Hello, 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 banana. Super Monkey Ball! Here it is, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. It's available for the PC, Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and the whole Xbox series of consoles. I'll be looking at them all here except for the Steam version. Wow, I'm finally playing the Super Monkey Ball games that matter in HD. The good news is, is that Sega didn't farm this one out. That's right, they made this one themselves. It's done by the Ryu Gotoko Studio, which was formerly known as Amusement Vision. So yeah, these are the same peeps who made the original games. I can't tell you how excited it makes me to see Sega not farming something out. This game has recreations of all 300 levels that were in Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, as well as tons of unlockable stuff. The visuals look pretty nice, but more on that later. The first thing that I was interested in was the challenge mode. It lets you choose to play the levels from the first or second game. I started out with the beginner stages from the first game, which is now called casual for some reason. It mostly felt okay as I played through the 10 stages in this area. That is until I got up to the 10th board. And oh man, I was having a hugely difficult time here. I'm not sure if I ever even died on this board in the GameCube game, but here I was having great difficulty not dying. So you know what that means. Yep, the controls are, well, they're bad. Look on the mask of my boy. I noticed this as I began playing all of the other stages and modes as well. I think a lot of this has to do with a reworked camera. The camera responds much slower now, and it can be tough to roll your monkey in the right direction. You can adjust the sensitivity on the camera, but honestly, I suggest that you don't do that as it only makes it worse on any other setting. Speaking of the camera, you can now control it with the right analog stick. This is actually a really good thing. Now you don't have to turn your monkey to face a direction, you can just rotate the camera and then press up. The problem is that whenever the monkey moves, it also adjusts the camera, so you gotta be careful. 
As I was playing the game, I often found myself trying to overcorrect, and it's almost impossible not to. I don't know if there's a large dead zone in the controller of every console, or if it's the game's fault. Trying to go down narrow paths, even straight ones, is excruciatingly difficult. I had the most luck playing the PlayStation 5 version with its controller. The worst controlling platform is probably the Switch Joy-Cons, but only by a tiny bit. I even tried using a GameCube controller for this game. Unfortunately, it doesn't make much, if any, difference. The developers actually know that the control is not great, so they offered several workarounds. One is the help mode. You can enable this at any time, and it points in the optimal direction that you should go. You can also hold the R1 button to slow the game down to make more precise turns. I personally didn't find either of these features very helpful, but that's just me. Next, you have unlimited lives, which means you can try again and again and again until you get it right, and you'll often need to. Lastly, you can mark a stage clear without even beating it. You spend points that you earn in the game to do this, so you can just skip a level if it's giving you issues, and the game will think you cleared the stage, though no clear time will actually be recorded. You know what though? After a few hours, I did start to get used to the controls, and that made the game a bit easier for me. I think if you've never played Super Monkey Ball 1 or 2 specifically on the GameCube, you may not be as frustrated as I was with the controls since you won't have any point of reference for them. Experienced players will probably not have a good time right away. I've got to say though that I've been playing this game for well over 10 hours now on all different versions, and I still don't have a good handle on the controls, just better than I initially was. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the game's actual content and gameplay. As I said earlier, there are no longer lives in this game, so you can keep trying each stage in any mode as many times as you want. That means there's very little reason to collect bananas as there aren't any extra lives to worry about. That also means that the extra stages at the end come automatically unless you use the help mode. Beat those and it's back to the main menu. No end credits minigame, unfortunately. Even Super Monkey Ball Deluxe had that from both games. And there's also no name input. There's a story mode here, and it acts a bit more like the one in Super Monkey Ball 2 than the one in Deluxe. I say that because the only stages offered here seem to be the one from the second game, and there are only 10 in each area. The story scenes themselves have been simplified, if that's even possible. I mean, not like there was a whole lot of story to begin with. I recommend that everyone start the game in the story mode, as it will ease you into the controls and the difficulty. You'll be able to have fun with a bunch of different stages before Stupid Launcher shows up, they even changed it slightly to make it easier by adding these indentations in the launchers themselves. Spoiler, it doesn't help at all. Feel free to skip this idiotic stage. Fall out. Some other stages have been modified as well. This one here called Anthropod gets rid of the gaps on the turny things and the exit comes up sooner. It's now stupid easy, even with these controls. Go. The physics of the game are slightly different now. Some tricks still work, like here dropping down to each level below but many others do not. I should be able to bounce off of this building and hit the goal or at least come near it. I tried more than 20 times and I could not get anywhere even close to the goal platform on this stage. On this stage, I should be able to bounce over the middle portion here by getting enough speed and hitting the edge of the platforms, but I can't get enough height off of my bounces to make that even remotely possible. And to prove that it's not just me, in this stage called triangle holes, you can make it to the goal simply by holding up and bouncing your way across. See that? Fun and easy. In the new game, that absolutely does not work. I'm thinking that you just don't bounce as much as you used to in the new game. If the physics are changed even just a little, that kind of messes the game up, you know? As you play, you earn points. You can use these points to unlock stuff like characters. Sonic is in here, for example. I like that he collects rings instead of bananas. There are other characters to unlock, like the Sega Saturn, but no Sega Genesis. I haven't even seen the Saturn available for unlocking yet. Oh wait, here it is, it's in the deluxe version. I don't have all of the DLC for each version here. You can also unlock additional game modes which are available under the special section. The original stage mode features unmodified stages with their original harder difficulty. Of course it throws one of the toughest at you right away, good luck. Yeah, I dislike this stage very much. The thing is though, is that the supposedly modified version of this stage in the main game is identical from what I can tell. No clue what they modified about it. This whole set of stages is its own mode for you to beat. You can't play these stages in the challenge mode with the rest. There's also the DX mode, which features the stages that were exclusive to Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. These are all, well, mostly super fun. 
They look like they're from the second game, but the stage design is more like the first game without the dumb ramps and buttons. Most of them anyway. I had a big old smile on my face as I was playing some of these stages and I'd die and the smile would stay there because that means I get to play that stage again. Some of these are just so fun you want to keep trying again and again. I love that. Once again, there are a bunch of these stages and it's like its very own challenge mode. Plus, since they're from Deluxe, they were designed with crappy control in mind, so they work a little bit better for this game. Mostly. Go! There are other modes like the Dark Banana Mode. Again, this is its own set of stages and you need to avoid all of the nasty ass stale purple bananas. These stages are quite difficult. Touch even one banana and... Game over! Then you try again... Game over! And again... Game over! You can try as many times as you want. Game over! I don't think they know what game over means. Game over! There's also golden banana mode. There's no goal on these stages. Instead, you need to collect all of the bananas to clear the stage, and there are a ton of them. I was never big on collecting the bananas, so this mode just isn't for me. It's another one that's pretty tough, though. You can also purchase a jump option, but it's rather expensive. Turning it on slightly penalizes you as you won't be able to record your clear times. Wow, that sure was easy. A bunch of mini games are here as well, but they all seem like they're from the second game. Sadly, they messed these up as well, at least the one that I care about, Monkey Target. Unlike Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, you can only play the version of Monkey Target from the second game here. And you know what? It's super hard to gain any momentum and I usually just end up falling out of the sky. This is extremely disappointing. Even though technically the same developer made this version, I'm pretty sure all of the people on the team didn't have much love for the originals. Why does it work so differently? Look at the mask of my boy. Okay, you might be saying that I need to get good. Well, you are wrong. I already am good. In fact, that might be my problem with this new game. I'm just too used to the old one. Anyway, let's dive into the graphics and sounds and all that fun stuff. Go! Okay, let's talk about the game's presentation. I was able to extensively play the game on the Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. Like I said earlier, it generally looks pretty good, even though it's a very simple game. There's lots of color here, and most areas are nice visual upgrades of the original stages that they represent. They upgraded some textures a little bit, but not all. The textures here, for example, look pretty blocky, so they didn't touch all of them up. Unfortunately, the game was made with Unity. Usually, that's your clue that you're in for a suboptimal time. There are exceptions, of course. The good news, though, is that it runs at 60 frames per second on each platform, most of the time. That said, every version will drop frames sometimes, though it's mostly pretty rare. I will say that, surprisingly, I noticed the most frame drops on the PlayStation 5 version. I don't even know what to think about that. This is a native PlayStation 5 game too, it's not just running the PlayStation 4 version in backwards compatibility mode. It's not really frame drops per se, as technically it's still running at 60 frames per second, but sometimes it just doesn't update with the correct amount of motion between each frame. I hope what I'm saying makes sense and I hope you can see what I mean in this slow motion example. I think the reason for the frame drops is that Unity is just rearing its ugly head. Sega actually has their own engine called Dragon which they use for their Yakuza games. That engine doesn't exist for the Switch though and that's probably why they used Unity. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions seem to render in native 4K so the edges look super nice but they don't have any extra texture detail. No version of the game supports any kind of HDR, sadly. I think the crazy colors of this game would look awesome and super bright in HDR, but alas, it's not to be. The game gave me a small bit of motion sickness when I played it on the Switch in handheld mode, but I had no issues with motion sickness on any other platform playing on a TV, even a big one like a 77 inch. There are plenty of other visual changes to the game aside from the bump in resolution and color. For example, the branding of dull bananas is nowhere to be seen, understandably. In fact, I always kind of thought that it was weird that it was ever even there to begin with. Sega Amusement Vision no longer exists under that name, so the AV logo is nowhere to be seen. It's usually here in this stage, but now it's just a banana. That actually makes this stage a lot tougher since you have to go right to the edge. But believe it or not, it's easy once you get the knack of it. Amusement Vision's URL used to be on this stage, but now it's just random monkey and banana icons. And although I haven't made it to the stage yet, I'm sure the GameCube that you roll around on that was in Super Monkey Ball 2 is long gone. But of course, that had already been changed for Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. There's also a photo mode, I guess that's a thing now. So you can, you know, take a picture of your monkey if you really, really want to. 
As for the audio, they redid just about everything here. Even the sound effects are mostly new. That's right, there's brand new music. Some of it is completely new, while other tracks are arrangements of the tunes that were in the original games. You know what? Some of it's pretty darn good. Most tracks are fine, but a few seem like they don't really belong in the game. I mean, does Super Monkey Ball really need any wub 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 in it? Yikes, that sounds out of place. If you pay extra for the deluxe edition, you can toggle the original music as well. I'm glad that's here, but sad that you have to pay extra for it. The original tunes are some great stuff, though. They also replaced the announcer. I recommend turning the announcer's volume down to six or so because she be loud. Hurry up, 10, nine, eight. She also over enunciates everything. After you have a fallout so many times, it gets kind of annoying when she says, Fallout. Weirdly, the mini games have a different announcer. Ready, go. He sounds like he might be the guy from the original games, but he sounds different. The game is strictly in stereo on all platforms. It only comes out of your left and right speakers if you have a surround setup. That's fine, a game like this doesn't need surround sound and booming subwoofers. Though of course I wouldn't complain if it happened to have them. In the end, I'm glad that they decided to remake the game and that more people can experience it. I just wish they had taken far better care of the camera and the control. It's probably 10 times as difficult as the original games in areas that should be fairly simple. I don't have much confidence that this will be addressed in a patch because it's not at all buggy, it's just that the team didn't really understand what made the first two games so special. Of course I hope I'm wrong, and I'll be damn happy if I am. Like I said, if you've never played Monkey Ball much before, you might come out with a rosier view of this game than I did. I really want to like the game more than I do, but I have to call it like I see it. Ready? There you go, that's Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. I'm starting to become a bit discouraged because it seems like remakes of games just can't quite get it right. Is it me? Is it the tools that they use to make these games? Is it the consoles and the controllers themselves? Is it something else? I don't know. Anyway, what do you think of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. and get good! Increase your gameplay abilities! Never lose again! Yeah! yeah! Fall out. I think I need another hit! Fall out. Okay, one more hit! Oh! Goal! Yeah! 
get good gaming inhalers. Side effects may include increased gaming focus, faster gaming reflexes, stronger gaming endurance, humiliated opponents, more winning, less losing, better sniping abilities, faster than reality reaction time, higher scores, and bloody stool. Get good now and win or mint.